Hello everyone, and today we are going to learn a very powerful tool used in proofs. And this is called mathematical induction. Mathematical induction. So what mathematical induction does, the main idea is that it proves that the first case is true, and then and then it proves that if the previous case is true, if the previous case is true, the next step has to be true. So if these two things are proven, then we don't need to uh, test for each of the cases. Right? So we know that the first case is true. If, the, if we can prove this part, the first case is true. And if we can prove, uh, so the first is uh, proving the basic step. The second is proving the, uh, the process, right? So if the first case is true, then by proving the second case here, or by proving uh, this step here, we're also proving that because the previous case is true, or the first case is true, the second case also has to be true. And then if the second case is true, the third case has to be true, and so on. So uh, it goes from one to two to three. It automatically sets this process up. So if we can set this process, if we can prove this process right here, and if we can prove that the first case is true, then it automatically proves for all the other cases instead of having to prove each of these cases individually, uh, we can just prove the first case and then prove that the process is true and just prove the whole thing, right? So that's the power of mathematical induction. And let's actually use some examples uh, to see how much we understand about mathematical induction. So I'm gonna color code this. I'm gonna put the first case in red, and I'm going to put this second process in blue. I'm going to attempt to prove uh, this summation property. So if you're adding all the numbers from 1 until n, the addition of consecutive integers, that has to equal n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, and we've derived this formula using a certain process by um, comparing this with the n plus 1 case. Or you can derive this formula by using the rainbow method where you're matching up the 1 with the n and then the 2 with the n minus 1 and so forth. But we're going to try and attempt to prove this process with mathematical induction here. Okay, so the first case would be uh, we have to prove that this is true for the case when n equals 1. When n equals 1, is this true? Uh, we're, I'm just substituting 1 for n everywhere, so that's going to be 1, and then 1 plus 1 over 2. Let's see what we get on the left side. That just means we're adding all the numbers from 1 until 1. Right? So that's just going to be 1. On the right side here, I have 1 times 2 over 2. The 2s are going to cancel, so I just have 1. I have 1 equals 1 here. So it's true for the case when n equals 1. Now instead of proving the, the same thing for when n equals 2 and for when n equals 3 and for when n equals 4, uh, that's going to take a long time. I'm going to use this next step of mathematical induction. If it's true for the previous case, then it has to be true for the next case. So I'm assuming that it's true on the previous case. So if The summation until k, if this part is true, if this part equal, actually does equal uh, k plus 1 over 2, so if this is true, then the next step has to be true. Then the next step would be k plus 1, right? I will have to be k plus 1. I'm just substituting k plus 1 for n here, okay? k 
plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1, which is 2 plus 2, over 2. Okay, so here I have to prove if this is true, then this has to be true. So let's see if that's right. So on the on the left side here, the summation from 1 until k plus 1 of i, well, that's going to be the same as the summation, or let me actually write this out. That's, that's the same thing as saying 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus all the way until uh, k plus k plus 1, right? It's the sum of all the numbers from 1 until k plus 1. So I'm separating this into this group right here and this group right here. So that is going to equal, the first part here is going to be summation from i equals 1 until k, right? And then the second part is k plus 1. The reason I'm separating it like this is because we already know that this part, that this part equals this part. So we can simplify this. This part is going to equal k times k plus 1 over 2 plus k plus 1. All right, so that's going to equal um, k squared. Oops. That's a terrible way of writing k squared. k squared plus k. I'm just distributing the k here over 2, plus 2k plus 2, I'm multiplying uh, 2 to the top and bottom of k plus 1, so that I can combine the two fractions here. That's going to equal k squared plus 3k plus 2 over 2. Now this factors, the numerator factors into k plus 2 and k plus 1. And we can see that this is actually the same as this part. So if you see our train of work here, we went from here, uh, we, we went from here to here, 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 here to here, and then we've proved that that actually does equal here. So these two are actually equal. So we've done the proof for both of our mathematical induction, right? And now, without having to prove the case when n equals 2 or n equals 3, since we've proved that if it's true on the previous case, then it has to be true on the next case, and we've proved that it, it works for when n equals 1, using this blue process, we can also say that because the previous case of n equals 1 is true, the next case of when n equals 2 has to be true. And if the, n, the case when n equals 2 is true, then the next case of when n equals 3 has to be true. So notice how just by proving this blue process here, I don't have to prove each of the individual cases. I can just prove the first case, and then uh, this process does the rest of the proving. Okay, so let's... Uh, try another problem, a little bit more difficult. This time let's try and prove the case um, summation of squares. All right, squared. Now that is going to equal n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. This is the formula uh, that we've memorized. And let's see if it actually is true. Okay, so the first step would be, is this true when n equals 1? Let's see, 1 until 1 of i squared. And on the other side, I'm also substituting 1 for n, so that's going to be 1, 1 plus 1, and then 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 over 6. Is this true? Uh, on the left side here, I have 1, I'm adding all the squares from 1 until 1, which is just going to be 1 squared. On the right side, I have 1 times 2 times 3 over 6. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6, so the numerator and the denominator will cancel, leaving us just with 1. So 1 equals 1. So it's true for the, the initial case, the first case. 
Okay, so this this is the easy part. Now, oops, if, let's start with if, if this is true for when i or n equals k. So I'm, we're assuming that this part is true, k plus 1, 2k plus 1 over 6. If this is true, then it has to be true for the case when uh, n equals k plus 1. That's 1 until k plus 1 of i squared. And again, I'm substituting k plus 1 for n here. So that's going to be k plus 1, k plus 1, plus 1, which is k plus 2. 2 times k plus 1, which is 2k plus 2, but I have a plus 1 there. That's going to be plus 3 over 6. So I have to prove that this is actually correct. Is this correct? Okay, so let's look at the left side here. The summation from i equals 1 until k plus 1 of i squared. We can separate that, like we did before, into the summation until k plus the last term, the k plus first, the k plus one term. And because this is squared, we have to square, it, square the k plus one. Okay, again, if you don't, if you don't understand how I got from here to here, you can think of this as one squared plus two squared plus three squared, etc. So uh, k squared plus k plus one squared, right? And I'm just writing the first portion here as this, and the last portion here as this. Okay? Now, we know that this part right here equals this part right here. So let's substitute that. So that's k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6. And we're adding uh, k plus 1 squared to this. Okay, so let's have the denominator of 6 here. So let's multiply both the top and the bottom with 6. And we're going to get k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. Let's move our screen a little bit to the side. Plus 6 times k plus 1 squared over 6. And you'll notice that we have a common term here. We have um, k plus 1, so we can factor that out. So that's going to equal k plus 1. And we have k times 2k plus 1 left plus 6 times k plus 1 left. That's over 6. Let me go up from here. So let's leave the k plus 1 outside. And let's simplify what's inside. So we have 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 6. And this actually is 7k. So this actually factors, the numerator here factors into k plus 1, 2, 2k plus 3, and k plus 2. And remember, we also need to remember the denominator. Let me write the denominator here. And if you notice, this is equal to this. I just, uh, the order, the numerator order is just a little bit different, but it doesn't matter because it's multiplication. So we've proved that if it's true for k, then it has to be true for k plus 1. And we've also proved that it's true for the first case. Right. So now we've automatically proved, because it's true on the first case, it has to be true on the second case, right, using the blue, blue process. It has to be true on the second case, it has to be true on the third case, it has to be true on the fourth case, etc. Right. So notice how with mathematical induction, we don't need to prove each of these cases individually, but if, if we can prove this process right here, if it's true for k, then it has to be true for k plus 1, then we can basically do all these proofs at one time. Okay, so that's the power of mathematical induction.